David Herbert Lawrence was born in Nottinghamshire, England. He was an eminent playwright, novelist, essayist, poet and painter. One of Lawrence's most innovative and popular works is his collection of poems, Birds, Beasts and Flowers. In these poems, he has written about nature based on his experiences in the Mediterranean and the American Southwest. He grouped the poems in this collection under various categories such as fruits, trees, flowers, creatures, reptiles, birds and animals. His poem Snake appears under reptiles. Lawrence wrote the poem Snake during his stay in Sicily, Italy in the early 1920s. The poem is based on his actual encounter with a snake at the water trough. Now let's understand what this poem is about. On a hot day, the poet walks towards his water trough. He sees a snake drinking water at the trough. The snake had crept out from a crack in the wall. He sips the water silently while the poet awaits his turn. The snake takes a brief pause and looks up at the poet. He flashes his fangs and appears to think for a while. Then the snake resumes his task. The brown color of the snake's skin resembles the dark depths of the earth from which he has appeared. The poet recollects what he has been taught. Snakes must be killed. Remember, this poem was written in Sicily where golden brown snakes are considered poisonous. But the poet confesses that he likes the snake. He compares the snake to a guest who arrives, drinks water, and departs peacefully. The poet wonders whether it is cowardice, perversity or humility that prevents him from killing the snake. He admits that he is most afraid of the snake. Yet he feels deeply honored to have the snake drink from his water trough. The snake has his fill and looks up dreamily. In a regal, godlike manner, he looks around and then starts slithering away back to the hole. When the poet sees the snake disappearing, he is overcome by a strange feeling of horror. He picks up a log and throws it at the snake. The poet thinks that the log does not hit the snake, but the snake wriggles back hurriedly into the crack in the wall. The poet regrets his action and feels disgusted at his own behavior. He curses the conventions of society and education that made him attempt to kill the snake. The poet now wishes the snake would come back again. He compares the snake to a king living in exile. The snake is the uncrowned king of the underworld who is due to be crowned again. The poet feels that he missed an opportunity to be in the company of one of the lords of life. He will have to make amends for his petty behavior. In this poem, the poet tells us about his encounter with a snake. The snake is peaceful and the poet likes it. However, the poet listens to the voice of education and attempts to harm the snake. He then regrets his unnecessary, violent action. D. H. Lawrence does not give the snake any personal attributes. He treats the snake in a literal way. The golden brown snake slithers to the water trough, drinks the water and departs peacefully. Whatever we understand about the snake's demeanor, 
is based on the poet's thoughts. The poet compares the snake to cattle to indicate that the snake was probably as innocent and harmless as cattle. He also thinks that the snake is godlike in the way it looks around after drinking the water. Finally, the poet compares the snake to an uncrowned king living in exile under the earth. He thinks the snake must be honoured again as king. The poet is gentle and hospitable. He waits patiently for the snake to finish drinking at the water trough. He is vulnerable. He likes the snake, but education and social conventions have influenced his thinking to such an extent that he tries to harm the snake. The poet is sensitive. Though he does not actually injure the snake, he feels remorse. The poet is torn between his feelings of affection for the snake and the demands of education and society. The poet likes the snake and is honoured to have him as a guest. He does not want to hurt the snake. But his education and societal conventions tell him that the snake must be killed, especially a poisonous golden snake like this one. The poem highlights how man is afraid of nature and tries to assert his superiority over it. The snake does not do anything to provoke the poet's anger, yet the poet gives in to the voices that tell him to kill the snake. If only man was less afraid, then both man and nature would coexist peacefully. When the poet throws the log of wood at the snake, he is immediately regretful. He describes his act as paltry, vulgar and mean. He even compares his situation to that of the mariners in The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. The mariner had killed an albatross for no reason and regretted his decision. Similarly, the poet tries to kill the snake. The snake does not die, but the poet regrets having lost the chance to be with one of the lords of life. The poet feels he must make amends for his petty and unkind act. The poem is rich in its use of figurative language. Several similes have been used in the poem. For example, the poet compares the snake to cattle, a guest, a god and a king. The poet has used alliterations in the poem. Notice how the initial sound of the consonants has been repeated in sit straight, burning bowels and peaceful pacified. The poet has also used repetition in these lines. Words such as black, afraid and slowly have been repeated for poetic effect. Here is an example of transferred epithet. The quality of being clumsy is transferred from the poet to the log. Through the use of figurative language, the poet has created an image of a very hot day in July, where the snake and the poet have come for a drink of water. The initial interaction between the snake and the poet is charming. However, the poet's harsh action at the end shocks us. It depicts how education influences people to behave according to the acceptable conventions of society rather than follow their own natural instincts.